Hi. Yesterday this clock ran out of power and uh, obviously I wanted to change the battery of this. Um, but then I thought to myself, maybe it's a good idea that I measure the amount of power consumption of this clock. Right after that, I realized that I have actually different clocks at home. So some of them like this, um, they seem to rotate more or less continuously. But then this clock, the one that is here, it does not run continuously. It actually doesn't have the second hand, first of all. And also, um, every second it creates a tick, like tick, 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 like many other clocks. Um, so obviously there must be some difference between the motor of this one and the motor of the other one. So I thought maybe it's also a good idea to open the motor and look at inside and see where the difference come from. Okay, so this is what I'm going to show you in this video. So in order to calculate the power, first I measure the voltage and then I measure the current. So to measure the voltage, we just connect the, these things together. And maybe I put this one here, put this one on top of it and just measure the voltage and current. So we can see the voltage is 1.61. Uh, so approximately the voltage is fixed and that is equivalent to the open circuit voltage of this battery. This is more or less fixed. In order to measure the current, I need to use some, need to use this one and basically I connect this one here. Changes. This goes to milliamps and this one to positive. This goes to negative. So we can see that uh, the current measurement we have trouble, and especially if we set the multimeter on DC measurement, we do not measure a proper value. The reason is very simple because the current drawing from this battery is not a DC current, it's actually a pulse current. So we cannot uh, measure the current when the multimeter is on the DC operation. So then I'm going to change this to AC and we are going to measure the RMS value of the current. But even in this situation, you can see that the current will jump between 400, uh, it's 0 0.400 or 0 0.450 milliamps. But uh, of course we notice that the, the value is jumping up and down. So we cannot really trust um, this measurement. But for the moment, let us assume that this measurement is correct. Um, so in that case, I want to do some calculation here for you. So typical acclaimed battery like, like these things, like these batteries, they have 1,800 to 2,800 uh, milliampere hour. So this is the capacity uh, of these type of battery. Let's let's say take an average one, so it's 2,400 milliampere hour. Now this means that um, if we use one milliamp, it can supply 2,400 hours. So it can supply that one milliamp for 2,400 hours. But now, of course, here we had approximately 0 0.4 to 0 0.45 milliamp. So let's take 0 0.4 milliamps, which means um, if we consume 0 0.4 milliamps, we actually can, um, this battery can last 2,400 hour multiply 2.5, because 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.4 is um, uh, like multiply 2.5 gives us one, one milliamp. Basically, this will be the total number of hours that this battery can can operate this clock. But of course, I can I can simplify. This is one day, so it's hundred times two point five. It's two hundred fifty days. But this again, it uh, it seems to be wrong because these clocks usually work for much longer time. So probably our measurement is is wrong. So we have to do something uh, else. So that's why uh, I want to use my oscilloscope to measure the current and the voltage again. Okay, so now I turn off this one, I put it aside, I take the battery off, come here, here. So with an oscilloscope, uh, it's right now set at 500 millivolts. And we can see that the voltage is indeed uh, 
one, two, three, and some some parts, so 1.3 and something, which is 1.6 volts. So basically, the voltage stays constant. But in order to measure the current, I need to use a resistor. And basically, with this resistor, I will connect in series with the with the power, and then I will measure the current because I can measure the voltage across this resistor on the oscilloscope and that gives me the current then. Okay, so now I have the resistor, but maybe it's a good idea that I measure the voltage again because now I have a resistor in the circuit, so that might change the circuit a bit. So what I'm going to do is to measure the voltage across um, this, uh, like these are the, after the resistor, and here we have this one. So let's see what, what will be the voltage signal. You can notice that there are some dips on the voltage uh, signal. As you can see there, not very clear, but there are very little dips. So uh, still I can consider that the voltage after this resistor, like the one that is applied to the to the clock is more or less fixed. But there was a little bit of dip, and that the reason is very clear because we draw some current, and during the moment that we draw a current, there will be a voltage drop across this resistor, which we don't, don't measure it. So um, basically the vo voltage on the clock will be a little bit less than the open circuit voltage of the battery, which was 1.6 volts. But the amount of voltage drop was very small, so I can consider that uh, we have a similar amount of voltage as the previous case. Um, so this resistor is 33, 33 ohm. Um, if you use bigger resistor, then the voltage drop will be bigger, so your measurement will be affected. But uh, if you use a smaller resistor, the, the voltage drop will be small, so the measurement will be accurate. But if you use two small resistors, then we cannot measure the, the current, because the current also is very small. If this resistor is also small, the voltage drop will be very tiny, and we, we have a hard time to measure it on the oscilloscope. All right. So now, the, so let's say that this is okay. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to measure the voltage across this resistor, which then I can extract the current from it. So I think the, I have to set it to much lower values because, so currently this is set on, um, Hundred. Uh, it's difficult to connect everything. So these are actually the current peaks that we can detect. So now I have to be quick and capture one of them. Maybe I increase this one once more. So fifty. Okay, so now I capture the current. So this is the current waveform. And what we can see is that uh, the, the width of this current waveform is 40 milliseconds. So every second we have a current pulse of 40 milliseconds. And the magnitude of this is approximately, uh, each scale is 50 millivolts here. Maybe it's not very clear on the camera, but totally we have 50 millivolts, 100 millivolts, but on the top part is more or less half. So it's like the total average magnitude during this period is 80, 80 millivolts. So we have roughly 80 millivolts. We measured 80 millivolts there. But this 80 millivolts is only for uh, 40 millisecond. So this 80 millivolts is across this uh, resistor of uh, 33 ohm. So of course, if I divide these two, I will get approximately uh, 2.5 milliamp. So this is 2.5 milliamps for during this period of 40 millisecond. Of course, 40 millisecond is one over 25. This is one over 25 of one second. So if I want to calculate average amount of current, like the RMS current over long period, I have to divide this one by 25. 
So 2.5 milliamp divided by 25 gives me 0.1 milliamp average. So the average amount of current in this uh, that its clock consumes is 0.1 milliamp. Now, if we calculate the, the lifetime of this uh, battery again, because we said 2,400 uh, milliampere hour, which now in this case, I have to multiply 2,400 to 10, because 1 over 0.1 is 10, which means it's 2,400 2, times 10, and this is one day, 100 times 10 is 1,000 days. So this clock actually, this battery can actually operate this clock for 1,000 days, which is approximately between 2 to 3 years, 3 years. Of course, this is per assumption that this is 2,400 milliampere hour. But this is reasonable because the clock actually lasts a few years for me. So this calculation is correct. Now, this was this clock. As I mentioned, I have another clock which runs continuously, and that is this clock. So I'm going to do the same measurement over this clock. Now, the voltage will stay the same. Uh, so what we are going to measure is basically only the current. So I'm going to only measure the current. And now, which one is positive polarity? You are the positive polarity. Here we have, of course, because this one runs continuously, the pulses are not apart one second. The pulses are more often, as you can see there. Uh, maybe I should increase this one. This is a typical uh, pulses that we have. Okay. So now, if I look at this again, the, this one is continuous, so we should not uh, take care about 40 milliseconds, uh, the, the time scales or something, because this comes continuous. But of course, if I, I have to calculate the RMS value of this. So what I can see here is that the scale, the vertical scale is 20 millivolt, and this one is approximately one and a half scale. So we have roughly, um, um, roughly 30 millivolt peak value. So of course, because there are some gaps here, in these regions we have emptied, there is no, no current, and in this region only we have the current. So certainly I have to divide this uh, 30 milli um, volt by two, at least by two. Uh, so the average would be approximately 15, but actually it's less than 15 because this empty area, this under, under the graph is less than the empty area. So I can reduce that instead of 15, maybe I can, I can reduce it to something like 11. So let's say the average magnitude of voltage here is 11 millivolt. Uh, so it's 11 millivolt. But of course, this is the continuous, so it's not 11 millivolt over 40 milliseconds. It's just 11 millivolt everywhere. So obviously, again, we had a resistance of 33, milli ohm, 33 ohm, which means uh, right now I need to divide these two together, basically to get uh, the the current consumption of this uh, clock, which will be something like uh, 11 millivolt is the peak divided by 33 ohm, and that gives us uh, 1 over 3 um, milliamp. So 1 over 3 milliamps. Now, we have 1 over 3 milliamps here, and of course, the, the clock uh, runs for 2400 milliampere hour so this clock actually will last for 2400 hour multiply 1 over 1 over 3 which is 3 which means this clock would last for approximately mm, 300 days so this clock actually lasts for only 300 days while the other one lasts for what is it thousand days uh, okay, so we have measured the power consumption of these two clocks, and the conclusion was that uh, the clock that operate based on um, single click per second mode, like this one, it consumes much less power than those clocks that operate on continuous mode. So now this video already becomes very long, so I'm going to stop the video here, and in the next part I will show you the internal construction of this uh, driver, and basically we open it and we do some measurement and we compare the two and see the differences. 
But before I say bye, I want to tell you something about the measurement that we have done with that multimeter. When we did the current measurement um, for this clock on that multimeter, we observed that the RMS value it was 0.4 milliamps. But then when we calculated with the oscilloscope, we observed that it was 0.1 milliamp. So the reason is that uh, the frequency of these pulses are 1 hertz. And the RMS measurement for those uh, multimeters, uh, the, the multimeter has a, a, a limited bandwidth, so from 45 hertz to 10, 10 kilohertz. So obviously, if you want to measure 1 hertz with that, the, the measurement would not be accurate. And that's why the value that we read on, on the multimeter was not proper. And of course, when we put it on DC mode, then the numbers will be completely wrong. So that was the reason why our measurement uh, at first was wrong. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.